Happy Tuesday! We are learning about parentheses today and how we can use parentheses in extended um, equations. So, um, I'm starting on lesson 92 on page 500. At the top, I'm going to read it and you can read it along with me. Um, it says parentheses, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are called operations. To solve some problems, we do more than one operation. In the expression below, or in the equation below, we see there are two operations. The parentheses show us which operation to do first. So, on your page, on my page too, it says 12 minus 6 plus 2. So, you have to do what's in parentheses first. Alright? This parentheses first, 6 plus 2 gives us 8. And then I'm just going to go ahead and bring down everything that I have left. Okay? So now I have 12 minus 8. Now, whatever we get as our answer here is our answer. Okay? So, we know that 8 plus 4 is 12. So, I know my answer is 4. So, the answer to the whole question is 4. I know that seems crazy because there's a lot of other numbers that we usually work with. But let's do another one. And I promise that you will be um, very into this once we're done. Okay, here we go. Example number one. It says simplify 12 minus, and simplify, just so you guys know, is a fancy way of saying please solve this equation. <laughs> so 12 minus 6 minus 2. Okay? So 6 minus 2, like I said, you have to do parentheses first. 6 minus 2 is 4. And then we're going to bring down every piece. And I have 12 minus 4, and I get 8. All right? All right, let's keep going. Because like I said yesterday, the more we do it, the more you'll get adapted to it. And I hope um, that you guys are stopping this if you need to. If you need to redo a question, perfect. Just do whatever you need to do with these videos. Um, which is greater? Okay, so now... They're giving us a question over here. I'm going to make them two different colors so we can figure this out. They're giving us a question over here. And then we have another question to solve. And I'm going to put it down here. 12 Okay. So now we're going to see which one is greater. Let's solve this one up here first. Let's solve the blue equation. I'm going to solve it in blue because that's what we're doing. Um, so we have to do it in parentheses first. 12 divided by 6 is 2. And 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So our answer up here is 1. So if this green equation is more than 1, then we know that this equation at the bottom is the answer. Okay, so 6 divided by 2 is 3, because 3 times 2 is 6. And then we bring down our division. We bring down the other number, which is 12. 12 divided by 3 equals 4, because 4 times 3 is 12. And we have 4 on the bottom, 1 on the top. So this guy down here is our winner. He is more than 1. Because 4 is more than 1. So another way you can write this is, um, well, you can do this. 4 is greater than 1. I would accept that. Or you can write out the entire equation and write 12 divided by 6 divided by 2 is less than, and you can write this one right next to it. Either one would be the right answer. Okay? Alright, let's do example number 
three together. And you see too how the parentheses make such a difference, right? Because if you do the parentheses one first, or you don't do the parentheses one first, it makes a huge difference, huge, huge difference. All right, so on the bottom, it says using compatible numbers. When adding three numbers, it does matter which two numbers you add first, okay? So they're literally going to show you this, this concept, exactly what I just said, just by putting parentheses. It's so crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and do 12 plus 6 plus 2. And again, I'm going to say the same thing again, but it's going to be parentheses in a different spot. 12 plus 6 plus 2. Okay? So I'm going to do parentheses up here first with the dark blue color. 6 plus 2 is 8. 12 plus 8 is 20. Okay? 12 plus 6, I'm going down to the yellow one, is 18 plus 2 is 20. I don't want this to confuse you, however, because if I did another question and maybe it didn't come out to be the same because of the parentheses, it just happened to be the same in this instance, okay? Now I'm going to read at the top for you while I'm erasing this. So it says a strategy to help add three numbers, or sorry, three or more numbers, um, quickly is to look for compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that together are easy to work with. So compatible numbers... They're easy to work with, they get along together, they're compatible, okay, that's a good way to say it. They're like friends, they're easy to work with together. So it's like if I put you in a group with somebody else in math rotations, I know you guys are compatible together because you're easy to work with together, all right? So think about it like that. For example, numbers whose sums are round numbers are compatible numbers. So, for example, 50 plus 40, plus 160. If we add from left to right, we first add 40 and 50 to get 90, then we must add 90 and 160. However, we might notice that 40 plus 160 is 200. Okay, so let me show you what they were just saying. They were saying some people would do 50 plus 40 is 90, but... They were trying to show you that if you know that these two make 200, of course you would start off with these because then you can just add the 50 and you get an answer of 250. That's what they're saying, okay? But we can use parentheses to show which addition we want to perform first also. So now numbers that end in 25, 50, or 75 are also easy to work with because we can imagine counting with Orders. So these numbers that are easy to work with are numbers that you can easily count. That's what they're saying. Okay. The compatible numbers are easy numbers to um, add together. So let's do example number three. And let's make it, um, let's make it red. The supply closet has 75 crayons. 80 pens, and 25 pencils. How many writing tools are there all together? Automatically, you know this is an addition question because it says all together, okay? You're adding 75, 80, and 25, all right? Right off the bat, what the, uh, what the textbook wants you to do is know in your head, okay, what numbers can I easily add together, kind of like we do mental math, and what numbers are probably going to be more difficult to add. So off the top of my head, I know that 75 plus 25 is 100. 100 plus 80 is 180. 
that was way easier than trying to figure out, oh, okay, well, 80 plus 25, you know what I mean? So, like, those numbers, 75 plus 25 is 100. They want you to make a group of 100 or a group that you know the answer to and then add it, okay? So, um, they they said the same thing. So, they put 75 and 25 together, total of 100, and then you mentally know now that 100 plus 80 is 180. So, we can also use compatible numbers to subtract. So, let's go ahead and do this. Sorry, it takes a little while to erase. <laughs> Jasmine, ooh, shout out to Jasmine, Missy girl, had... $8.79. So I'm going to write this down. $8.79. Oops. There we go. She spent 400, sorry, 400. What is happening with my brain? $4.24 at lunch. So $4.24. About how much money does Jasmine have left? So we know this is already a subtraction question. To find the exact amount Jasmine has left, we would subtract $8.79 and $4.24. The amount $8.79 and $4.24 are both very close to the amounts we say when counting by quarters. So... We can rewrite the subtraction using compatible numbers. So this is kind of like estimating. So I'm going to show you what the book wants you to do. So to make a compatible number with $8.79 is to make it $8.75 minus, and then we're going to bring over $4 and another quarter number is 25 and now this is way easier to add up. 5 minus 5 is 0. 7 minus 2 is 5. And 8 minus 4 is 4. Okay? So, is that... So, um, this is what I want to ask. And I know we're not together, but I want you to think about this really quick. Is that the exact amount that, that uh, she would have left... No. So I don't want you to get confused. What the book wants you to try to do is if you were at lunch with your friends, an easier way for you to figure out how much money you would have left is by making a number that you want. Excuse me. Is making a number that you want to work with. So I don't want to work with $8.79 because that's hard to think about. But if you change it to $8.75, that's an easier number to think in your head, oh, I know this number because I am worked with quarters. And then $4.25 because, oh yeah, I worked with quarters. But it's not your exact amount. Is it pretty close? Yeah. But I'm going to show you really quick that it's not the exact amount. So I'm going to make this $8.79 minus $4.24. We have 9 minus 4, which is 5, 7 minus 2, which is 5, and 8 minus 4, which is 4. Is that pretty close together? Yeah. So that's what they're trying to tell you. If you make the numbers close enough, it's not going to be so far off. But I don't want you to get in the habit of doing this unless it says, please find compatible numbers or estimate the total of okay so yeah that's our little sneak preview in compatible numbers and um, parentheses so those are the two little lessons that we did today I also want you to do lesson practice you do not have to turn it in today but I do want you to do it just to get your brain flowing with what we just went over and I will talk to you guys tomorrow bye